Hello, my name's Katie Darby. Um, I'm a novelist and short story writer and flash fiction writer. And I also run a short story live event where the stories are read by actors called Liars League. Um, and I'm going to talk to you today about flash fiction, which is a fiction format, which is very short stories. So usually you'd go from maybe as little as six words up to 1500 words, and they usually take about five minutes to read or listen to. So uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is read you a flash fiction of mine, which was inspired by a picture of a statue uh, of a hare, a leaping hare, which is in the middle of London in the commercial center. And I thought I would write a story about how the hare got on his spike. He's basically, you can see the picture, uh, hopefully, uh, that inspired it, but he's a beautiful leaping hare. His body is all spread out and he's sort of um, held on a, a crescent shape. So this is Moonstruck. Moonstruck, Katie Darby. What you want, my mum used to say to me, is the moon on a stick. Funny idea that. Don't know where she got it. It will have to be such a long stick, such a small moon. And why would anyone want that anyway? Yes, as a leveret, I got a bit moonstruck, a bit stargazy. But don't we all, us hares? What with that and going mad in springtime, we're not the most balanced of creatures. But here I am, perfectly balanced. Balanced on the moon, in fact, and not going anywhere. At least, not for a while. I shouldn't have tried to jump it, I know. I was too full of myself. March sap moving in my veins like champagne. I couldn't sit still. Physically couldn't stop myself moving. You know when you just have to run and run like a dog who slipped the lead, chasing tirelessly, almost catching its tail? Freedom. That was me. Aiming myself at this sliver of moon. A silver bullet. From some angles, it looks like I'm impaled, stuck on its crescent tip. But come a bit closer. You'll see I'm just resting on it, just for a second. At least that was the plan. Paws and limbs flung out in front and behind. I look like I'm swimming, don't I? A slow, calm breaststroke doing lengths up and down the heavens, bobbing among the stars. I wish. My mum will have conniptions, she will, when she sees me up here. She told me always to look before I leapt. She said I wanted the moon on a stick. Now I'm stuck on the moon. There's a turn up. Thing was, someone told me there was a hair in the moon, but I never could see her. I thought maybe I was too far away, so I took a flying leap, and here I am. I wonder how long it'll be before I can come down. Will you look up at the moon tonight and come back and tell me if I'm still there? Flash fiction, because it might not have been defined way back when, but it has always just been very short stories, has been around since human beings have been telling stories uh, and since people got up, up from the campfire and wandered away because it was a bit too long and boring. Um, so probably some well-known examples of the format that you could call flash fiction would be things like Aesop's Fables, uh, you know, which people might know, things like The Hare and the Tortoise, uh, which often are, are retold as, as children's stories because they're short and they're very clear and they have um, a kind of momentum to them. They're often, they're, they're really self-contained stories. Um, you could say as well that some of the parables in the Bible uh, count as flash fiction because, you know, they're a couple of paragraphs long, they make a point, um, something happens, something changes. Um, more recently, um, Interestingly, there's also a, a form of fiction called a prose poem, uh, which was quite popular uh, in, you know, sort of any time up to the Victorian era. And 
a lot of authors have written in the field of what they would call prose poetry but often that's like um, it's a paragraph that's describing a moment and that is also a way of writing flash fiction because you might think how can I compress a whole story into you know a page or 500 words or even 100 words how can I do that there's too much plot but you can also try and capture a mood or capture a moment or um, paint a picture in the reader's mind and so like a lot of Russian authors love writing po prose poetry so Chekhov and Turgenev and uh, and all sorts of examples from uh, particularly 19th century uh, Russian literature but the best place to look for it at the moment I would say are websites like hundredwordstory.org um, and obviously they've got archives of just hundreds and thousands of stories by all sorts of different writers So flash fiction is a special form of compressed short story. Uh, most flash fiction can run between as little as six words and Ernest Hemingway wrote a six word story, which I will give to you at the end of this, and probably about a thousand words. Sometimes you'd say up to 1500 words, but the main thing is that you can read it in about five minutes. That's as long as it should take. It can take as long as you want to write it, but most of the time you can read it in five minutes. Um, it tells a story of some description. Now you might think, how can I get a whole plot into you know, 500 words or something? It doesn't have to be a huge story with um, endless narrative developments. It can be capturing a moment in time. Uh, it can be almost like a joke. Um, it can be, uh, finding a mood or describing a place um, so you just need to create create a picture in the reader's mind and tell them something about what's going on um, other elements of a story that you will find in flash fiction as well would be you'd need a central character probably uh, a setting definitely uh, you might have some dialogue between two characters or you could tell the whole story in dialogue um, and uh, a little bit of description and some sort of plot. Something's happening, something's going on. Uh, but they're very broad definitions because with Flash, it can almost be as compressed as a poem. It can almost be just capturing that moment and fixing it in the reader's mind. If you look around you, uh, you'll find that flash fiction is everywhere. Um, you might be able to look at it on your phone or on Twitter. There's um, a trend for telling stories in, um, in the length of a tweet, which is really cool. So anyone can take part. Um, you might see a little advert in the paper that tells a story. And this is actually the format of or, or inspires something in your imagination. This is the format of the six word short story by Hemingway uh, and it's called Baby Shoes and uh, it's set out like an advertisement in a newspaper. For sale, baby shoes, never worn. And it's up to you. The story is not telling you what happened, but it's giving you a hint and it's implying something about the baby shoes, maybe about the baby. So the story happens in your mind. Um, and you can find uh, stories of any length. Uh, it could be a page, it could be a paragraph, it could even be a sentence. You can find them in advertisements uh, that sometimes tell stories. Um, you know, a poster at the bus stop or on the tube or um, little stories that, um, you can pass between friends. Maybe they're real, maybe they're not. Uh, when someone's telling a story, you know how it becomes more and more exaggerated. So you can turn your real life into flash fiction if you want to, or you can uh, start writing stories that are based on the stuff that you love to read or the games that you love to play or um, a story that's about a friend, a character that you know. So these are two very short stories. They're both under 100 words. 
This one's called Say Something and it's told partly in dialogue. The train lurched, throwing her into his arms. He's strong, protective, loving, she thought. We'll marry at a seaside resort and have four beautiful children. He lifted her up and smiled. I'll always be faithful. When we're old, we'll travel the world together. The train slowed. She moved to the door. Thanks. Don't mention it. So that's a sort of misconnection story. And here's one that you might find a little bit more sinister. The Relentless Follower. Two pirates shuffled down the leafy sidewalk, followed by a tall man wearing a suit. The man waited in the shadows whenever the pirates raided a home, demanding candy, but he was always nearby. Your dad's starting to give me the creeps, Eric whispered at last. Wait, said Pete. I thought he was your dad. And that's by Andrew Looney. And the previous one, Say Something, is by Chris Orcutt. So just an example of um, how small they can be, but they have a point. And that last one, Relentless Follower, it's almost like a joke with a slightly scary punchline. So yeah, if you tell jokes in the playground or to each other or online, then those often follow a kind of story pattern where you you uh, introduce the setting and the characters, you find something out about them, and then there's a reveal at the end where things are not as, uh, as you might have expected. So I've got a little example of a short story called A Common Misguided Kindness, which is by Charles Dixon. So I'll read that to you as an example of a flash fiction which just tells about a tiny moment in time. Uh, it doesn't span years, it doesn't have uh, millions of characters, it just captures a moment. And that's something you can do with flash fiction. My friend John blew out a tire one summer day while driving through the south. After the new tire was mounted, the owner of the garage came over with a hose. Let me help you with that, he offered generously. And before John could stop him, washed away all its new blue specialness. So that's just a little moment of disappointment when someone's trying to help. So it's got things like irony. It's got other aspects of fiction. It's got characters, two characters. It's got dialogue. It's got a setting. It's got a character who's going somewhere. But it doesn't tell the whole story of what's going on. It just sort of implies it lets the reader guess where John is going where he's coming to why he's going there but the point of the story is the moment that happens between John and the garage owner and you might think that's that's not a full plot but it doesn't matter because that's not what you're trying to do you're just trying to get a moment uh which you can paint a picture in the reader's mind and uh, get them to understand how that felt when the new blue specialness is washed away so yeah, um, because Flash is so short, we're not looking at Game of Thrones style epic plots. Sometimes we're just looking at a character um, in their day, it might be a minute in their day. Um, the one thing I would say is, uh, you know, you, you don't have to have, you know, lots and lots of description. You don't have to have lots and lots of dialogue um, and things progressing in a chronological format you know first this happened then that happened the end and you certainly don't have to have a moral of the story but you do have to make something happen and something change and it's completely up to you what happens it could be something tiny could be something major you know um somebody sees a mouse the world blows up totally up to you um but something changes um and at the end of the story we are slightly different we've got us we were in a slightly different place um than where we were before you can find stories all around you anywhere you are um and particularly if you've got a phone on you. Um, but if you're just walking down the street and you hear, you eavesdrop, you hear somebody saying something interesting, that can be the start of a story. If you see something, um, you know, sitting on top of a bus and you see something happening on the street, um, if you have a, a friend or a relative or someone who's a real character, you can write a story about them. So you can find inspiration literally anywhere. But if you're looking for inspiration, um, then there are some great ways 
ways to do it. And one of the things that I often do is use a photo prompt. So uh, the story that I read out, Moonstruck, was based on a picture of a statue of a hare leaping. Um, and I wrote the story from that about the hare. Um, I've got a couple of photos. I've got a selection of five photos, actually, that you can use to inspire the writing of a hundred word story and uh, which is called a drabble. It's a hundred words exactly. And um, it that doesn't include the title and it can be about anything at all. Uh, so you can look for an image, a picture. Uh, that inspires an idea in you. Or sometimes you can take an object and this is something that I do in my class as well. Um, I look for anything randomly selected. Okay, what's this? Looks like a dice, but it's actually one of those date cubes. Um, so it could be something about having a significant uh, date in your life. It could be something about somebody who plays a dice game um reaching across randomly discovering things that might be fun to write about so this is a necklace but it could also be a chain it could be a rope it could be a snake um so these are the things that are all around us that we can take inspiration from and sometimes they just spark a random idea in your mind When you're actually writing the story, I would say if you're trying to write a hundred word story particularly, you can write it as long as you want to. You'll be amazed how quickly you get to a hundred words. And then when you're doing the editing, you really have to cut down and be sure that every word counts, that you're kind of compressing your prose, that you're making all your sentences really strong and efficient. Um, sometimes I think if we're writing essays or book reports or something, we think longer is better. So, you know, five pages has to be longer. It has to be better than three pages because it's more writing. But sometimes if you can say everything you want to say in three pages without any waffling, that's a much better piece of writing. And if you, if you have a 200 word story and you can bring it down to a hundred words just by editing and it's still the same story, just with all the fluff cut out, then that makes it a really powerful, impactful piece of writing. That's what's so good about flash fiction is that you get this kind of strong impression or a strong emotion from it, from reading it. And yet they're so tiny, they're only, you know, um, they only take a minute or five minutes to read, um, but they really punch above their weight. They're very, very kind of, um, they're the kind of pocket rocket of fiction. Uh, so if you're looking at your sentences, then you might think, oh, that's a bit too long. Maybe I'm saying the same thing twice. Sometimes people will say, you know, he was a tall man, tall as a tree, you know, tall as the sky, that sort of thing. And think to yourself, what's the best way to describe how tall he is? I don't have to say it three times. I'll just say it once and say it really memorably. So that kind of compression and economy in the story, it's almost like writing poetry. If any of you have tried writing poems, you know a lot of it's about figurative language and making the images in the poem work really hard to um, give you um, an, an idea, uh, like to, to create an idea of the reader's mind, to create a picture. Uh, and sometimes you can use your poetry skills for flash fiction as well. Uh, so that you can tell a story very efficiently. You can use one line uh, to create a picture and then the next line you'll talk about a character um, and all of a sudden you've written a hundred word story and you're done. Okay, now it's your turn to write some flash fiction. I'm going to ask you to write a hundred word story which is called a drabble. Uh, and it has to be exactly 100 words. That is the catch. It doesn't include the title, so you could have a long title like my 100 word story about the time I met the queen naked in a dream. Uh, and that wouldn't count. So, but the story itself does have to be 100 words long. So if you write too long, make sure you cut short, compress your sentences and uh, make your images really tight. So, I'm going to ask you to look at the five photos and um, pick one of them that sparks off something in your mind 
and start writing a hundred word story about that image. Now, for example, we've got a picture of a little white puppet cat. We've got a picture of the Grand Canyon. Uh, we've got a picture of a Rubik's Cube, a young woman in black and white. And we've got a toy car. So of these pictures, one or other of them might start telling you a story. Or maybe you can think about the two pictures together. What would happen if the young woman in the black and white picture had the puppet cat? Is it a real cat perhaps? Or does it gain powers and start becoming alive? Or if the toy car was dropped down the bottom of the Grand Canyon? That sort of thing. Often when we get ideas, it's not one thing. It's actually two things coming together, a character and a setting or a time and an image. So write your 100 word story. You done it? Well done. So your bonus challenge, once you've written your exactly 100 word story, your Drabble, is to take your Drabble and now you can expand it into 500 words, which is maybe uh, a page, two pages, something like that, depending on your handwriting or depending on the font size you're using. But you must also do one of the following things. You have to change the genre and you have to make it a gothic story. So you might have heard about the genre of gothic. It's often quite frightening. It's got links to horror. It's very dramatic. Uh, all sorts of exciting things happen. It has a kind of dark noirish element. Um, sometimes it's going to be historical, although lots of people write modern gothic as well. And it has uh, certain features like it will often um, have ghosts or supernatural things going on, deception, um, kidnappings, that sort of thing. Uh, in Gothic fiction, you know, statues can move and bandits raid uh, ancient houses. And there are ancient treasures to be discovered. It's great fun. A couple of other things you can do mm. if you want to change your drabble. Uh, change who is telling the story. So maybe you've got two characters and one of them is the protagonist, is the narrator, and you can change it to the other one. Maybe the queen starts uh, telling a story about when somebody came into the throne room naked. Um, you can also change the setting of the story. So if it's set in modern day Bradford, you could move it to ancient Rome. You could set it in 2050 on Mars and you can add a new character as well. Drop a new character into the story and see what they do to the plot. So, off you go. Finally, to read some more flash fiction or even watch it online, I can recommend some great places. So the BBC runs a 500 word story competition and the winners are read by celebrities like David Williams, who you may have heard of. Um, and they're all online now, the competition winners for 2020. They're all stories of up to 500 words. I've listened to them and some of them are great. Um, there is a, a Twitter handle, which is Storgy Kids. So it's a short story event um, called Storgy and they've got a children's section. Uh, there are lots of flash fiction websites, 100wordstory.org and um, and Smoke Long Quarterly. They have kind of more grown up stories, but um, some of them are ones that I think you'll enjoy. Um, I run an event called Liars League and we have a flash fiction event very frequently called Short and Sweet. Um, and we have no lower age restrictions for entering. So if you do write a short story, 100 words, 500 words, up to 800 words, I think, uh, then feel free to send your work in to us. And there are lots of other places that you can send your work to. Um, but look around you, there's lots of anthologies of flash fiction. Um, there's lots of websites that you can go to. And if you just Google flash fiction for kids or flash fiction for teens, um, there's a wonderful um, 
American um, publication called One Teen Story, which you might really like if you're uh, if you're at the older end of the spectrum. Um, and they accept submissions as well. Um, it's not just flash fiction, it's also short stories, but it's a wonderful professional publication that if you write that amazing story, you could get in. <laughs>